Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Renee with Redesigned by Renee Co. And this morning I wanted to um, start this small side table with you. I am going to be painting this piece in this beautiful color that um, I've done a few small things like um, candlesticks with, but I have just been itching to paint with this color. Good morning, Anne. Um, this is country chic paint and the color is called cheers and i don't know if you can see the color it is brighter when it's wet good morning janelle uh it's brighter when it's wet but when it dries it dries this just absolutely gorgeous plum color and it is absolutely amazing so i got this little side table um locally and it was black um it has a lot of stuff you know kind of wrong with it and so it, it kind of looks you know like it's in decent shape but there's a lot that needs to be um worked on so i decided what a fun piece to try this color on because um it's a bold color so um i'm not quite brave enough to paint it on a gigantic piece but a small piece this is gonna look absolutely amazing and i don't think the camera kind of shows the actual true color so um i will post the photos when i'm completely done with the staged um stage photos with the actual uh, true color on it. And to prep this piece, what I used was, um, you can order these through the Hocus Pocus um, US site, and I will link that in here when I'm done. So what I did was I used this sanding block, which has different grits on each side, even the little sides have a, a heavier grit. And I scuff sand the entire piece um, to prep it. And after I used that, good morning, Christine. And then after I did that, I cleaned it with regular old um, household rubbing alcohol. This is the um, recommended um, cleaning agent for Country Chic. And the reason that they recommend Country um, rubbing alcohol is because Country Chic is um, really health conscious and they want to make sure that you can use products that you naturally have in your home. You can paint this inside of your home. As you can see, I'm in my living room. Don't tell my husband, <laughs> I'm gonna move it out of here before he gets home. Um, you can use household products so that it, you know, it's not dangerous to you at all. It's not, there's not real chemicals. This is the same thing as in your hand sanitizer. Um, this is what we, I use to clean my pieces. And then after I have scuff sanded, I clean with denatured alcohol and with a uh, clean rag. And then I come back and, good morning, Lori. And then I come back and I spray it with clear water. This is a misting bottle. Um, that I got from Sally's Beauty Supply. It was like, I think $8, I'm not really sure, but um, this is really good to just mist, so you don't soak your piece, you just mist it with this for the clean water and rinse it with the clean water. So that is what I do to prep my pieces. And um, I'm going to be painting this piece with this um, two, inch, two inch angled zebra brush, um, which I said I will put the link in the top when I finish the video so that if you want to decide you want to buy any of these things, the zebra brushes are, um, I was going to show you. If you can see these brushes, the um, bristles are synthetic and they are so super fine. Um, they make the paint go on like a dream. I mean, they are finer than any brushes I've ever seen. It's probably not going to show, but they are almost like makeup brushes. The bristles are so thin. And what's good about this is that they, they glide the paint on, but not only do they glide the paint on, these clean up like a dream. These clean up better than any brushes I've ever um, tried before. These, I, I don't want to call myself a brush snob, but I do think I'm brush selective. <laughs> I'm definitely brush selective because I'm a little bit picky about my brushes because I do not like brush strokes. It's kind of a, I uh, don't like brush strokes. And I also um, don't like brushes that are a hassle to clean. And these, um, Sometimes the bristles will stain a little bit if your pigments are strong, which my Country Chic paint uh, line, the pigments are very, very strong. So sometimes they will stain the bristles, but they will the paint will completely come off and it doesn't leave any little um, dried flecks in there like I tend to get with some other brushes. Um, it, they, it rinses clear right off and it is so, the bristles are so soft, it feels like a makeup brush. So we're gonna get started and we're gonna paint this little side table in this gorgeous color of country chic cheers you can see that we are going to go ahead and get started and um most cases you can get away with one coat but we might need two coats because we're doing 
you know, a dark color, dark colors, you know, tend to need more than one coat. And I'm gonna stand behind this table so I can do the back, the side of it, front of it, top of it first. Let me grab this real quick. So, I'm hoping you can see that. So, um, all you need to do is get a little bit on there. My husband's pulling him right now. He's gonna bust me in the living room <laughs> painting. He's about to, I'm about to get busted. <laughs> I'm about to get busted. So you see the paint literally just glides right on. Glides right on the surface. And the key to getting a clean finished look is to do long, clean brush strokes. If you're going like this, that's gonna show up when you finish, when you want that long, when you want the clean look with minimal brush strokes. The key is to move your brush across the piece and really get a good clean look across the top. Cause if you don't, if you do kind of like this, it will show up in the finished end with brush strokes. So for the sides, you have to kind of go like this. So when you do this on the sides, it will change the direction of your brush, then you just come back across again. And that is how you get a pretty finished top. So when you go across like this on the top, I'm hoping that shows up in here, you wanna come back across it, across the top to make sure your brush strokes are going in the same direction. That will help you get a clean finished look. Let me finish the top and then I'll come back around to the front and show you. This color is so gorgeous. So I tend to start in the middle and work my way around to the sides. But I always finish it off with going all the way across the side. All the way across for that clean finished look. And like I was saying, this brush is just absolutely amazing because it just glides that paint right on. And you barely need any paint on there because it holds just enough of a right amount of paint on there to give you a good coat. So if you see here, I kind of went a little bit like this, but then I always finish it off with a clean, even brush stroke. Clean, even stroke across the top. And even with the first coat, there's minimal brush strokes. So I'm gonna, you're gonna see the back of my head for a minute while I paint the front of this. And a lot of times I do take the drawers out, but for this, I'm not gonna take the drawer out. I'm just gonna paint over top of it. And then I'll come back and pull the drawer out before it fully dries. Make sure I have clean edges. Long, even brush strokes. And I can see, I do want some of the black to come through a little bit, but I don't want it to be a dominant color underneath there. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need two coats of this because I'm covering a really dark color. And so when I get to, points like this, I will actually change the direction. Good morning, Cindy. I will actually change direction of my brush and I will go up and down. So you want it to keep as natural with the direction of um, the piece that you're painting. As you can see, the paint just glides right on with this brush. And if you go over that side, like I did accidentally, just go back over it, go down in the direction that you intended it to be. This color, it's probably not showing up that good on camera, but it's gorgeous. And it dry, it's when it's wet, it looks a little pinky, but when it dries, it dries like this deep, gorgeous plum color. Really beautiful plum color. And you will see some brush strokes at this phase before you put on an additional coat. You will see brush strokes. That's okay. Those will minimize when you get your second coat on there. So 
Sorry, my dog's coming in. What you doing? For the legs, I use a couple different techniques. I use a little bit of stippling, and then I also use kind of like going in. I do try to go with the um, shape of whatever area you're painting. So if your shape is this way, I go this way. If my shape is that way, it, I go that way. But for pieces like this, you have to kind of go at an angle a little bit. And sometimes you have to use the stippling to get into those grooves. Legs can be a little tricky, but once you get, you know, figure out what technique works best for you, you will find out which, you know, what's the best way to get your paint to go on. And this coat is um, definitely, I'm going to need a second coat. But for this size of a small side table, I could use a four, um, four ounce paint and it would give me two coats on this table. I'm painting for my 16 ounce, but you could completely do this size table with a four ounce container. And those four ounce containers are only $7.95, which is a really great price point, especially if you want to try colors like this that are bold that I, you know, most people would not try this color if they have to invest a lot of money in it because bold colors, you know, you either like them or you don't. So, and sometimes you don't know until you see it dried on your piece because the undertones of whatever you're painting will also be a factor in determining how dry your piece is. I mean, what, what color your piece is when it's dry. So for these long surfaces, you want long brush strokes. You don't want short little brush strokes. And if you are catching the replay, please hit hashtag replay. If you're catching the live, please let me know where you are from, what the weather is like there. Good morning, Maria. If you've got snow, if it's cold, if it's warm. And I can see a lot of the black coming through and it's looking really pretty. I'm gonna switch sides now. Can you see the color, how it's drying? Let's see if I can get you in there a little bit closer. Do you see the difference between the wet and the dry, how it's really dry in this like deep plummy color? If you go over a spot that's no big deal if you go over a spot and the paint has already started to dry some and it feels like your brush is dragging you can take your misting bottle and just mist it a little bit and that will allow your brush to glide smoothly across the piece thank you maria i love this color too i am i'm actually in love with this color and i've been waiting for a piece to paint this and this one I had in my inventory and I was like, I'm just gonna do it because I love this color. Once it's dried, it's just this deep, deep, rich, plummy color and it's just gorgeous. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. So this paint um, does not require you to mist it when you're working with it. It stays plenty wet enough to work with it. It's just if it starts to dry too much, um, a lot of things that factor into that are temperatures. Um, good morning, Diana. A lot of things that factor into this are the temperatures, what you're painting in, um, humidity levels. There's a lot of factors that go into how fast your paint will dry. Um, if you're painting in an area that has, you know, sun exposure, your paint will dry a lot faster. Um, but this paint doesn't dry too, too fast. It really does give you the ability to um, work with it without it drying too fast. And I'm loving this color. Absolutely loving this color. It is so deep and rich. So just try to stay going in the direction of your piece. Whatever direction that is, just try to 
For the best finished look, try to stay with the direction that your piece naturally is. And if you have any drips, you can catch them right now and just brush them out. I had a drip right there and I just brushed it right out because it was still really wet. Good morning, Jennifer. For the sides, I'm gonna turn this piece so you can see it a little bit better. Should have had this on some wheels. As you can see here, sometimes when you're painting, you get a little bit of drips, that's okay. Just take your brush and run right over them. As long as they are still wet and damp, they're gonna brush right off. So I wanna go with the direction that this naturally is. As you can see, the paint glides right off of this paintbrush. And when I go to wash this brush, it might be tinted a little bit with this color, but there will be no paint left inside of this brush because it, the paint washes straight off of these brushes. And so I don't have to worry about if I decide to paint in another color later on, um, even if the, the bristles are stained a little bit because the pigments in this paint line are so strong. Um, but the paint glides right off of this when you wash them. So you don't have to worry about getting um, paint flex in your whatever you decide to paint next because the paint glides right off when you wash them. It glides right on when you're painting and it also glides right off when you are washing them. So you just barely need to get any paint on your um, brush because it does hold the paint very well. And I'm gonna wait and see when I finish this piece um, if I want to seal it with just a natural wax or if I want to seal it with um, like a black wax and add a little bit more depth to it. I won't determine that until I get it's dried and I see what the color looks like and see if it needs to have any depth added. Since I'm painting over black, it's actually adding quite a bit of depth and even when I paint my second coat, um, it'll still have some depth to it. So I'm not exactly sure what, which way I'm going to go. Um, but I will determine that when it actually fully dries, this paint actually has a top coat built into it. So you do not have to seal it. You just have to give it the three weeks to cure. But I top coat all of my pieces mainly because I don't know where they go. Um, and I don't know if people are going to abuse them. Like my people abuse my furniture. So I top coat all of my, all of my pieces because they could be going to a boy home like mine. Um, Diana says, I could watch this all day. Actually, I should be doing that this all day. I think you should. Diana has been, um, recently started painting a bunch of pieces herself and they are gorgeous. Good morning, Suzanne. Her pieces are absolutely gorgeous. She definitely has a gift. And she definitely has an eye for design. So just a little bit of paint on your brush and try to stay going with the natural direction of the piece. This has got like a barley twist legs, um, which could be a little bit intimidating, but there's no reason for them to be because as you can see, if you just go with the direction of them, it naturally wants to um, go on there nice and smooth. If you have little bitty areas like this that are kind of in there, you just need to stipple the paint in and then go back over it in the direction that it, it wants to be. See that my husband came in and left and you didn't even hear him. He came in, he's like, oh. <laughs> you never know when people are just gonna pop in over here. The um, Diana, the alcohol was for cleaning and prepping the piece. Um, sometimes I will use denatured alcohol, sometimes, um, I always scuff sand my pieces first, and then I use this, um, sorry, my dog's trying to be involved. Um, then I actually clean it with the rubbing alcohol. Good morning, Lynn. I clean it with the rubbing alcohol 
This is the product that Country Chic recommends because um, to clean and prep your piece because Country Chic wants you to be able to paint this in the middle of your living room with children and dogs around and not have to worry about any chemical exposure. So this is the recommended because most people have this in their home already. And so this is what I, first of all, I scuff sand my entire piece with a sanding block and then I come back and I follow it. Do not put your face in my paint. <laughs> Um, then I come back and I clean it with the rubbing alcohol and then I rinse it completely um, clear. I rinse it with clear water from my spray bottle that I bought at Sally's. And that is the process that I do to prep my pieces. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Ashley. Ashley asked, what color used on the piece against the wall? Love it. Um, oh, the piece behind me. Um, good morning, Mila. The piece behind me, and I will... Um, let me finish painting this one side and I'll move this piece over and you can see the piece behind me. That piece is painted in licorice. The piece behind me um, is a piece that I recently did and I kept her because, which I don't do. That is one of the things. I will repaint something in my house, but I usually never um, buy a piece to sell and end up keeping it because it's kind of on my, you're supposed to be a business list, so don't keep anything. Um, Yes, Diana, this is one product that is really good to have that because everybody has rubbing alcohol in their house right now. So it's and it's completely safe to use. You don't have to wear gloves to use it. So it's really good um, when you're working with, you know, your puppers that are trying to sit in your lap. This is my pupper. He's trying to get in camera so much. So I'm going to let him. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. He got his five seconds of fame. He's good. Um, but the piece behind me, I painted that with the Country Chic Licorice, which is just this dreamy, dreamy black color. And then I black waxed over top of it. And I sanded and stained the top with Kona. That wasn't very nice. Um, I stained the top of Kona. And then I added a copper gilding wax. I first distressed. I actually did a video on adding the, the black wax to the piece behind me. But then I also, then I had, after I had distressed it, I put black wax over it, which I just added this dreamy depth to it. And then I went on top of that with a copper gilding wax just to make all of those areas pop. Um, but I will move this out in just one second and show you that too, because it's um, it's absolutely gorgeous. And by a miracle, I found my friend Teresa with um, NTS Design Co. sent me a message um, that there was a piece available in, in her area that was identical to this, which I thought I would never find another piece like this. So I have one identical to this in my um, in my inventory right now. I think it's already pre-sold, but um, it I just if I could do these pieces behind me all day every day it, it would make my heart very happy they just are naturally gorgeous I had to add nothing to the piece which usually I will add some kind of embellishments or something to pretty up the piece but this has such natural ornate detail all I had to do was just make those details pop off of the piece it had all of those things on its own which is very rare it's very rare to find pieces that are just naturally gorgeous um, without having to add anything to them so all right, you need to go lay down. Go lay down, go lay down. Sorry, he's trying to lay in my lap. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so I will finish the just the small piece on the bottom here. Back up a little, please. Back up a little, please. Anybody else have a dog that wants to help paint? <laughs> okay, okay. I don't think I can pet you while I'm trying to paint, buddy. Can you see I'm desperate? <laughs> He's a mess. He's a mess. You're a mess. You, no, you're going to get paint on your face. You got to stop. All right. So, nope, you got to back up. Back up. Back, back, back. Back, back, back. Don't touch your face to the paint. Okay. I'm going to move this piece out of the way. So, as you can see, the, the first coat is drying on this piece. Let me turn it so you can see. And it is drying this gorgeous plummy color which is really hard to tell on the camera. When I get the stage photos, that is more in a natural light and it actually shows the true color of the piece. And I'm gonna um, do a second coat on this piece. Not sure if I'm gonna distress it. Um, I really, when I do a piece, I kind of kind of wing it and then I let the piece tell me what it wants to do and I wait to see um, when I get close to finished if it wants to be, what it wants done to it. So I kind of let the piece decide what it wants to do. And that's what I'm gonna do in this piece. In this case, I'm gonna definitely add a second coat because there's a little bit too much black coming through. But after that, I'm not sure if I'm gonna distress it, add some other, the hardware in this is gorgeous. 
So um, I don't have to do, worry about that. But let me move this piece out of the way. So I can show you this. I don't know if that's a little bit crooked. So this piece behind me, let's see if we can get you in a little bit closer without knocking over my paint. Can you see it any better? Hopefully. This piece behind me is done in licorice, country chic paint licorice. And then I added the black wax over top of it, which just added just enough of a shimmer and shine and just made the piece just kind of um, stand alone. And then I came and I distressed all of the wood areas. I distressed those to um, reveal the beautiful wood tones underneath. And then um, I went ahead and added the copper gilding wax to that. But if you can see down here, like all of this detail, this is all natural detail to the piece. And that's, um, and the legs are these clawfoot legs. Um, I just love it, look at these legs. Someone had messaged me the other day and said, you just get such beautiful pieces. And I was like, well, thank you. But I look at legs first. Legs are what I look at first when I'm looking for pieces. Good morning, Gwen. I look for the legs first, and then after I look at the legs, then I look at the rest of the piece. Because legs, um, once you, if you have beautiful legs on something, you can always add more detail um, by adding moldings or something else to the top of the piece. But this piece, I had to add absolutely nothing. And so I selfishly kept this piece in my home because um, I absolutely loved it. So, um, I'm kind of hoping the client that's buying this wants me to duplicate this same exact look, but she did buy the um, itty bitty, and that one is in a gray tone with a black over top of it, so she might want it to match that piece, but it would look gorgeous either way. So, I hope that this video, let me get back in there now I'm in front of my piece. I hope that this tutorial helped you just a little bit, and if you have any other questions, um, about the process of painting a piece or we do have a class coming up of paint your own piece that will be held locally and um, it'll be at design market in Aberdeen North Carolina if you are local and um, I am teaming up with Teresa with NTS design co she is based out of Raleigh so we are you know like our she's about our way but she's gonna come over here and join me to teach this paint your own piece class what I can tell you about this paint your own piece class is it's going to be fun Teresa is fun you will come away with lots of laughs and lots of fun and learn how to paint your piece from two different artists um that um, we have different paint styles but we both are um trained in and how to um get you a beautiful finish so um i'm excited about that class coming up and um i will put the link if you want to order the zebra brushes or the sanding blocks and they also have these things called red pads which are absolutely amazing for buffing and things like that. The red pads are absolutely amazing too. So, and you can also get the transfers. Um, I will be doing my kitchen cupboards when I get over my fear. Do not fear. This is one, this is the one thing, cupboards are definitely a big job, but um, if you do them in small phases, they definitely, um, they definitely are less intimidating, but it's, cupboards are just a big piece of furniture. So, um, I say that when I haven't, I have not painted my own kitchen covers. <laughs> I've been looking at them for so long, but I'm like, I just don't want to, it is a big job, but it, they look so gorgeous when they're finished and refinished. Um, it, it's a beautiful transformation. I've seen so many beautiful transformations on kitchen cupboards. So I got your back. If you got any questions when you're doing it, just reach out. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed the um, tutorial. I will put the link up there. If you want to sign up for the class, um, please go ahead and, and sign up on the events page on my page and um, I do have some other new things that are going to be coming out so it's very exciting if you did not hear the announcement um, in the last month some major things have happened I have become a content creator for Hocus Pocus US and I've also become a brand ambassador for Country Chic Paint so um, big things are happening I'm super excited to for all of the amazing 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 opportunities that I've been given and um, if I use a product and I stand behind a product, I can promise you that it is a good product because I don't stand behind products that I don't 100% believe in. So, um, and if you do buy any of my products, even if you don't buy them from me, if you buy uh, transfers or anything else, even from another one of the um, creators or from the main page, I would be happy to help you um, apply them. Um, 
or if you use paint and you buy it from somebody else, even if it's not my brand of paint, I would be happy to answer your questions. Um, it doesn't have to be the brand of paint that I carry. I would be happy to answer your questions. I've used most brands, so and each one of them has a different um, um, required method for using them. So if you do have a question with that, I would be happy to answer those questions for you. Just feel free to reach out, shoot me a message. And again, if you're catching the replay, please hit hashtag replay. And I thank you all so much for catching this live this morning. And I hope you all have an amazing day.